What's up, DBE fam? Welcome back to the show. We've got the one and only Renee back here today. I'm so excited. She is the CEO at Kevin and Renee Photography. She does brand photography, portrait photography, and most importantly, I think, photography education, which is where her digital courses come in. So this is a woman who knows a lot about branding, a lot about lighting, a lot about angles, and all things building your digital photography business, or just your photography business, I should say. So I'm stoked to have her here and have her drop some juicy nuggets on you. Renee, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. Okay. First things first, are iPhones fine cameras? Um, you know what? Yeah, they are. Okay. Oh, phew. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what is she about to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, um, you can actually make an iPhone take pictures better than unless you really know how to work your camera. Yeah. Yeah. For years, I thought, why is my phone take better pictures than my camera does until I yeah. realized it's me. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of the portrait cinematic mode or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, um, sometimes it doesn't focus on what I want it to. And so I, sometimes I want to throw my phone, but besides that, um, it makes things more, you feel like you're in a movie when you're yeah. watching. So, yeah. I always do my podcast recordings when I'm doing solo episodes or in-person interviews, I do them in cinematic and I feel like it just looks nice. I mean, I think probably to a professional video editor, they might roll their eyes, but I'm like, it, it works. It looks good. I like it. <laughs> oh, you, yours are good. Cinematic, yes. And yeah. iPhones are wonderful. Yeah. And so are Samsung and all of that, but I'm an oh. iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Everybody's an iPhone person. When you get the green text, you're like, really, <laughs> really <laughs> get with the times people. So back in 2017, about a year after we had gotten married, Mike and I took a honeymoon. And we went to Africa and we decided to buy this like fancy schmancy. I think it was a Lumex, Luminex. Yeah. Luminex, something, something, something big kahuna camera. Like I look like a tourist with a strap on my neck and the whole thing. And we had said, okay, we're going to have to take classes because neither of us have taken photography classes before. And this camera has 7,000 buttons and nothing is really like auto. We took one class and never used the camera. <laughs> Is that like super common? Cause it's so overwhelming. Yeah. Most people, when they ask me for photography advice, I'm like, if you want to pursue this as a business, then learn it. If you yeah. don't use auto or your phone, because yeah. <laughs> you are, if you're going to do it as a business, then there's a standard, right. That you, you should reach. But other than that, you can take just as good pictures with your phone. Now, if you're if you're trying to show off your business, right? Re taking real estate pictures or whatever, yeah, I would say hire a photographer. Right. But if you're just taking pictures of, you know, oh, it's date night, oh, it's th then yeah, use your phone or yeah. show mode on one of those cameras. <laughs> as a branding expert, do you feel some of the more authentic, real, messier type of maybe call it iPhone pictures or whatever actually do really well on social media, but then should we have like professional photo shoot photos on our website? Or do you feel like it's okay to kind of have a mix? What's your thought process there? Well, as a branding photographer, of course, I want you to do <laughs> pictures for everything, but it depends on what your brand is because everyone's brand is different. Sure. So if somebody's brand is more messy and fun and all of that you can you can hire a photographer to take pictures like that but if the if your feed being super consistent is not really important to your brand then sure throw in pictures from your phone it's okay yeah. whereas typically if you are going to run ads or you are going to do your website or you want to to put flyers out or anything like that, of course, you're going to want more professional photos. So, and it really depends on each brand because you could be just starting and maybe you can't afford to get somebody else to come. To yeah. Enter. Yeah. And so at that point, growing your business, doing everything you can to grow your business is more important than paying a photographer for the pictures. Once you get to a point that you have a budget for marketing, then you can start yeah. that. Louder for the people in the back. I mean, the amount of people that wait and think that they have to have the professional photo shoot, the big fancy website before they start selling. It's crazy to me. It's yeah. you're doing it backwards. 
and the number of times that I have changed my website. Yes. Ridiculous. <laughs> it, it was until I realized, until I even understood what my brand stood for. Well, ours, Kevin is a huge part of our brand, but before I understood what the brand stood for, I'm like, oh, I want this. And so I'm going to use these pretty fonts and these colors that have nothing to do with how we are. Yeah. And so I changed this. And then I pulled a little from there. And then I, and I changed my website probably, I don't know, five, six times in the first year. And look at all that time I wasted where I could have been going out photographing and yeah. <laughs> building my business. And so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of times imposter syndrome is huge and it makes us think if I just have a pretty website or if I just do the right post or if I just, then people will love me and mm -hmm. don't realize if you're just you, people will love you. Yeah. You just have to find the right people. Yeah. yeah. When you're doing photo shoots with people, what are some ways that you help them get past the jitters? Cause a lot of people are really uncomfortable in front of the camera. So it depends. Um, on the person because I try to feel out each family each because some people are jokey kind of people and if they mm -hmm. are then they're comfortable right away because Kevin and I are weirdos and it's <laughs> we play off each other and we kind of pick on each other and when we do that it's it's not this weird nervous like okay these people are arguing it's like people genuinely laugh at us so it's not hard for them to to get into it but um typically if it's a an individual, maybe they're self-conscious. I find something or things as many things as I possibly can that are truly authentic compliments, things I truly believe, not flattery. Yeah. And I tell them because if you tell somebody, like if somebody says, okay, I love my eyes. That's my, I, I, I do a questionnaire ahead of time. And so people tell me, I love this. I don't love this <laughs> so that I know what to focus on and what not to. Yeah. And if they just totally killed that shot and I'm like, your eyes look amazing in this picture. And then I show them the back of the camera. If I do that in the first five minutes, typically people just calm down because mm. they think that, especially if they haven't had a good experience in the past, they think I always look awkward. I just feel so weird. What, like what? And even when Kevin and I get our pictures taken, we're like, what, where, what, <laughs> what? Like how do I, <laughs> so we, even photographers need somebody else to tell them what to do, but, yeah. and we are used to people snapping a picture with our phone, right? And you get your phone back and you're like, ew, like, I don't, so, so when you, when we're able to show them, look, you are doing amazing almost every time, like I'd yeah. say probably 95% of the time people look at the back of the camera and they're like, okay. Like, <laughs> and when I hear that, I'm like, okay they're fine now they're yeah. and then they just trust us they just do whatever we tell them to because they see that they are doing a really good job it's easy to look at somebody else's pictures and be like yeah that's a really good photographer but I look weird in pictures mm -hmm. I'm awkward and so when we're able to put their mind at ease and show them how amazing they look in pictures then the whole rest of the session goes well yeah. And you're building rapport with them quickly, especially having them fill out like a pre photo shoot assessment, which I love. Do you help people with posing? Do you, do you guide them? Oh yeah. Yeah. If a photographer does not pose you. They're probably not the right photographer for you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless yeah. you are a model, which I don't photograph many models. I have photographed models, but typically you any one of us, like I said, we are photographers ourselves. And it's like, okay, I know a couple of the base poses and we just try to get into that. Cause we're like, okay, this is what's most flattering for me, but even we need the guidance. So posing is to be the most flattering. Yeah. And so every body is different. So we can't just say, oh, because you're a girl, you have to pose this way. Mm -hmm. Because this girl may hate her arms and this girl may be like, no, I've worked for these arms. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, so we, we coach them the whole entire way through. We don't let a moment pass where we're not telling them exactly what to do or praising them for the pictures or doing, you know, just, yeah, just letting it all flow because posing to me, I don't, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but if you don't pose people, you're not really a photographer. <laughs> Yeah. I've done so many paid photo shoots over the years. And I have had experiences where the photographer doesn't really give me much guidance, 
And it's frustrating as the quote unquote model, right? As the subject, it's really frustrating because unless there's a mirror behind the photographer, like I can't see what's going on. And when I did a lot of fitness modeling, there would sometimes be a mirror because we'd be in the gym. So that would be easier. Um, and I love Mike to death, my husband, who is my Instagram husband as well. But that's something that he doesn't do. He's not a photographer and he just, you know, takes one for the team and takes a couple pictures of me. And generally they'll, they'll either all look the same or I'm like, could you tell me what to do with my arm? You know? And he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm like, well, what looks interesting? You know, like look at the background, look at the foreground. How, how would just, how can I take up space better? How can we create triangles? You know, um, so it, it is, it makes such a difference. I did a photo shoot, uh, in November with a gal in Austin and she was phenomenal. I mean, it wasn't just even directing me. She would come over and like move my hair if it was in a weird spot. And that's the type of stuff that I really am looking for when I'm working with a photographer, because to me, that's them going the extra mile to make sure that we're going to get a good shot together. So I just think it's so important. Yeah. Well, yeah. And for photographers, I try to teach them too, that, that stuff of moving your hair and, and, uh, you know, not only does it set you apart that you notice all the little details, but it's way less work for us later. Yeah. We're right. And editing. Forever. <laughs> so <laughs> if we can just notice those little things, then it's win-win. Both of us are happy. Yeah. It takes yeah. a lot less time and it takes way, way less time to take from here to here, mm -hmm. then it does to edit that out in 30 pictures. <laughs> yeah. So if you're not watching the YouTube channel, Renee just kind of like did an example of if a bra strap is showing from here to here covering the bra strap, because in post editing, yeah, that takes a ton of time to make sure that you're not creating divots in the shoulder and making it look weird and like a third arm coming out, you know, you just want to remove the bra strap. But if you see it in real life, gosh, what a time saver to just fix it. And it does, it makes the person that you're working with feel so much more seen when it comes to branding. I know a lot of people, we've, we've had a lot of branding experts on the podcast before, and we've had this discussion, but a lot of people, when they think of branding, they think of color and topography, like text. There's so many more elements to branding. Where's the most important place to start when you're starting branding? I think when you're starting branding is to identify two things. One, who your ideal client is. Mm -hmm. And two, to identify who you are as a person, because you could have, I think personality is the biggest part of a brand. And you can, that goes into your colors and into your fonts and into all of that. But those things aren't nearly as important as if somebody is a, a fun individual and all of their pictures are just headshots posed with their hand up by their face. And it's like, that doesn't show me fun at all. Yeah. So your messaging, the way you move your body, all of that, it goes into not just pictures. It goes into your reels. It goes into your stories. It goes into your website, everything surrounding you, your personality, your brand. It's all one being, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so then once you figure all that out, then you can start looking at colors and fonts and all of that stuff. Yeah. So the brand is really how we almost want the viewer to feel, right? Mm -hmm. So for someone who isn't ready to hire a branding expert like yourself, or maybe a photographer right now, what is like a quick exercise that they can do aside from who are you and who's your ideal client? What are some exercises you could have them do or maybe it's like an activity on Pinterest or something where they can kind of start to create their own brand. I, what I usually recommend people do is market research and pick ones who it, most people start with ideal client, right? Most people think, oh, this is who I want. And so if you already know that to go to ones who are your ideal client and just ask them or ask your friends, that's an even easier place to start. Just ask your friends, Describe me in five words. Like if you were going to pick five words about me, what would they be? And that helps you start identifying what, like for us, authentic is a huge part of our brand because mm -hmm. it's just, this is who we are. <laughs> we're not going to, you know, we're not going to try to hurt your feelings, but we're not going to lie to you either. Like we're yeah. <laughs> going to tell you how it is. So authenticity is huge. And that's something that when I ask people, they're like, yes, you, you are come as you are. This is how you are. We don't have to wonder if you're hiding anything. Um, and so anybody can do that. They can ask their friends. And then Pinterest is a good 
second place to start once you kind of have more self-awareness of just go in and what kind of things appeal to you because aesthetic is important to a photographer but it may not be as important to a brand um, but when you start realizing okay I I'm I keep being drawn to the same things if you make a board and you realize hey all these things kind of look alike yeah then that's probably the direction your brand's going to take what if your ideal client is not necessarily, so there's a lot of things that I like, but maybe that doesn't translate to my ideal client. Does that make sense? Like, especially if let's say my ideal client was, um, a man who was, I don't know, looking to something with like architecture or something, but things that I'm naturally drawn to might be more right now. I I've always loved the seventies. So like seventies fashion, big glasses, very like Dixie, uh, what was that show that was just on, uh, Dixie and the six or whatever? Like, I can't, I can't think of it. remember that. Oh, it's so good. (laughs) But you know, very seventies and like shag carpet or like disco balls or that because I'm drawn to it and I'm saving a ton of Pinterest pictures in that arena might not actually translate to my ideal client. So where's that line? How do you kind of like distinguish that? So it depends on if you are trying to attract people that are very similar to you, because a lot of brands do that, yep. then that's okay. And if you're not, then it really doesn't matter what you like. It matters what your yeah. ideal client likes. Yeah. And, and so with that, you know, with us, it was easier to build our brand because we wanted to attract more people like us. Mm-hmm. So it was easy to talk about all the things that are important to us because we know they're also important to our ideal client. But if they clash, then you have, to, you can, you can show some of yourself in your stories and all of that. But as far as your main branding, you kind of want to shy away from stuff that would turn off your ideal client. If they're okay with it, like that's okay to show yeah. it a little, but, but if it's something that would turn them off, I wouldn't even actually show it in my stories. Yeah. It's interesting. There's a lot of awareness, like you said before, especially when you have a business that maybe isn't service provider where you kind of are the brand and people are buying from you to learn from you, i.e. coaches. If you have a physical product or a brick and mortar, that might be very, very different. So I'm just thinking we worked with a luxury dental company last year, a dental office in New York City. It kind of doesn't really matter what the dentist liked. It was like, what is the brand as a whole, the the luxury experience of you going into the dental office um, and and who they want to call in, which for them, it's like anybody with teeth. (laughs) There's a lot of people. It's a really big niche. If you don't have teeth, we can give them to you. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Anyone interested in teeth. Um, Yeah. So with, it's 2024. And, um, social media recently, you know, end of the year, beginning of the year, it comes out a lot of like the, the trends for 2024 and what to do and what not to do. And so part of my job is keeping up on a lot of that stuff, whether or not the trends actually are real or not something that I'm seeing a lot of, and I'm curious your opinion on it, uh, both with who's younger than us, Gen Z, right. We're we're technically millennials, which is weird. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm technically a millennial (laughs) weird. Like I'm, I don't resonate with that at all, but it's fine. Elder millennials. Um, so they were saying how like Gen Z specifically is kind of behind this trend of if your brand and business doesn't have a deep, an ethos, a give back a mission, they kind of don't really care about you. They being the Gen Z's. Now that's obviously a really bold statement, but I'm just curious what you think, how important is it to bring your mission and your vision to the forefront? Or if you have like give back and stuff like that, It it is important if that's your ideal client, Mm -hmm. our ideal client is not Gen Z. So (laughs) they, you know, but that resonates with a lot of people and giving back can, can be in so many different ways. You know, it could be giving free value. It could be like you do the school. Is it Ghana? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, It, there's so many different things, but for me as a branding photographer, what I have to find out is what's important to my client and their ideal clients. Right. And so a huge part of that is, is they have to do the market research with their ideal clients. But yeah, yeah we are seeing a lot more heart centered things lately. Like, yeah. and I think authenticity is a huge thing that Gen Zers really care about. They don't want all the fluff. They just want you to, to, to be authentic. And they do want um, they want to feel seen. They want to feel like they're not just 
these kids growing up. Like they're, they're already adults. They're already, they know what they want and what they want is very important. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that. When people are trying to stand out in, especially our space, digital marketing, coaching, it is saturated. That's not like a myth. It is, but it's not a problem. It's not an objection. How would you tell someone to stand out in their branding? Is it just literally use a neon color? Like put your pictures upside down? Is it that simple? I think that people stand out more um, reaching people that they resonate with. So I feel like even though the pictures are a huge part of what we do, there's a there's always an underlying message behind the pictures. There's a reason for the pictures. We don't just like come in and snap whatever pictures we think look good. (laughs) We want there to be a message behind it. And so people stand out by, by talking to the people that they're trying to reach. It's always genuine interaction is always the best way. And so even though that sounds like, oh, don't get your pictures taken because pictures aren't as important. (laughs) Um, Of course, I think that's important, but the biggest way to stand out is to be yourself and Mm -hmm. to tell other people what's important to you and what, especially if you're trying to draw ones that are more like you, um, because the right people are going to find you. And there's all different, there's, the world is so diverse, (laughs) it's so diverse that there's literally thousands of different clientele there. I mean, who I'm trying to reach is so different than other ones of your students who they're trying to reach. And by them just coming on and being authentically themselves and talking about maybe what other people won't talk about. To me, that's a huge way to stand out is not gatekeeping and talking about stuff that's vulnerable and Mm -hmm. okay, I went through this and I'm not just going to keep it to myself because so many coaches today want it want to make people think okay I have this glamorous life and nothing bad ever happens and we know that's not true yeah the crap happens all the time (laughs) yeah so it the more that coaches can be vulnerable and that does come across in images too sometimes people um, want us to take images of things that are very emotionally charged sure And, and that is going to resonate with their clients. And so like, then you don't, you don't really think about it, but I, we did pictures for a neuropsychologist. And one of the pictures that she wanted was bringing family in to talk about their family who has Alzheimer's. And so it's, you have to, you have to talk about the things that aren't the easiest to talk about. And that will draw the people to you that the people who want a coach who actually cares about you Mm -hmm. versus just wants your money. Yeah. And I think there's a level of, of care, but there's also, you know, through me sharing some of my personal life stuff in the last two years, I found out you and I unfortunately are in some of the same clubs, you know, and, um, it just immediately brings you closer. You have that relatability point, you have that compassion, you have that understanding for one another. And so I have never shared for the hope that it'll make a sale. I actually share so I can heal. Cause I feel like if I don't talk about it, I have to get it out. And as someone who runs like a public figure, I'm not famous, but as someone who runs a business and I'm on the internet and have been for 12 years, sharing my life for 12 years and all my things and ups and downs, I just feel it's really important as my personal brand. And I know a lot of people, friends of mine who never share anything personal and that's totally fine. That's their personal brand. But for me, I mean, I've always taken the come with me approach, not the look at me approach. And I think almost accidentally as people's businesses get bigger, as their followers grow, as they make more money, they all of a sudden just kind of happen to be on this pedestal and people assume that it's easy. Or from, for me, for example, I think people assume like, of of course she sells out every program. Like she, she hasn't had a silent launch ever, or it's been 10 years since she's had a silent launch. And that's just not true. And I think when I share the stories of struggle or you know, we just had, we sold one unit of something back in the fall, which I don't know the last time that that happened, but we did, we sold one unit. It was not really a launch, but, um, we put an offer out and one unit sold. And I actually sent an email today about it. And I was inundated with messages of people being like, I cannot believe number one, that you shared it. 
because you have this facade, you have this image to uphold. Number two, that that still happens to you. And like number three, you just, you live to tell the tale. So if you live to tell the tale, then that means I could live to tell the tale if I too have a silent launch or have one unit sold or whatever it would be. So I just think it's so important when we're talking about building these personal brands to share a little bit, to share a little bit. You don't have to share every, you know, your, you know, skeletons in your closet, but I do, I think it's important to share a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the main reasons why I joined your program. That's one of the main reasons why I've stuck along through the free training you do afterwards. All all the things is because I feel like I understand you because you share your stuff. Yeah. And so, and I never, you never, ever come across as, Hey, I'm sharing this, hoping that more people will buy from me. No, it's real. And people understand and get along with real. And so that's what we try to help other brands see is if you can, if you're not comfortable sharing something, you don't have to share it. Nothing says you have to share everything, but if there's a lesson that you can share to draw you closer to other people, it's not about sales. It's about having a community to support you. Yeah. I love it. As we begin to wrap up before we get into some rapid fire, where can people find you? How can they work with you? What do you got going on? So the easiest way to find us is on Instagram. It's Kevin and Renee with two E's at the end, dot C-O. And that is also our website, Kevin and Renee dot C-O. So it makes it really easy. (laughs) Um, And that splits off into three different areas. So portraits, branding, and photography education each have their own page. You just choose your experience and that's how to get in touch with us. I love it. So much fun. You ready for some rapid fire? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it really light and easy. When you were a little kid, what'd you want to be when you grew up? Okay. This is funny. A secretary. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I have really funny. big dreams. Yeah. Really huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, what are you currently reading or listening to? I am currently reading, e- well, listening to, uh, eat that frog, which was oh. a recommendation of yours. And yeah. I, yeah. It's really good. I need yeah, it to is really good. it so that I do the hard stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Favorite movie? Oh, it's that's really hard. Um, I'm just going to say Pitch Perfect, but it fluctuates all the time. Okay. I love it. I love it. What do people get wrong about you? I don't know what people get wrong about me. I'm pretty out in the... I think, I think people think I know more than I know because I tell you the answer to something, even if I don't know the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's an opportunity for growth. (laughs) It it is what I'm currently working on. Yeah. That's good. Guilty pleasure. Um, chocolate. Darker milk. Dark. Plain or like with stuff in it. Um, it doesn't matter. Plain sea salt. Yeah. Like yeah. And it's just dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah I love it. $50,000 question. If I were to grant you $50,000 in a check tomorrow for the business, you had to use it in or on the business. You could split it up or use it in one lump sum. How would you invest it? <laughs> um, I probably would take a tour around the world to write a photography travel blog. It's probably what I do. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. Super cool. It wouldn't get me very far. 50,000 wouldn't get no. me very far in the world, but, <laughs> but I'd go like three places and write about it. <laughs> Eat, pray, love. Of <laughs> I love it. And then final question. We named the company Digital Business Evolution because I believe you're always evolving and growing. And as you do, so does your business. So what is your next personal or business evolution? Um, I want to do in-person workshops and speak on stages this cool. year. That is what I have a in-person workshop coming up in two weeks and it'll be my first one. Amazing. And that will be my practice run. <laughs> so that's what I want to do this year. Awesome. I love it. And so it is, it's done. It's already done. Renee, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you love this episode and found value in it, please make sure you take a screenshot, share it out on social media, tag Renee at Kevin and Renee.co tag me at I am Jessica DeRose. Let us know what one of your takeaways were or, or tag us in a, in a photo you do go take a photo with your iPhone. Don't judge yourself, make some triangles, do the thing, pose, and then tag us in it and let us know you listen to the episode. And as always friends, cheers to your evolution. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. 
And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution. Evolution.